So we had said that SMM can be used for the typical power management type things, but it also can be used by BIOS vendors to place some proprietary code in a place that it generally can't be tampered with. So in order to achieve that, the BIOS vendor must take advantage of some of the hardware restriction mechanisms that Intel has built in. So how do they do that? How do they protect compatible SMM? Well, the first thing is they have to enable the feature using that GSMRAM-E flag that we saw just a second ago. And then they have to actually open up the memory range to say, I want to be writing to the SM RAM. I want to be writing to the RAM, not that video memory. So they have to make it so that the decoding decodes to RAM instead of video memory. And then after they have successfully written the code in there, then they have to lock it back down so no one can ever unlock it again. So let's see how that works. Well, back to SMRAM C, and here's our GSMRAM E. There's going to be two other bits that we're going to care about. There's the DOPEN bit. This DOPEN bit is going to be what makes it so that writes to that hex 30,000 are writing to RAM instead of to video memory. And then DLOCK is what's going to be set later on in order to make it so that no one is allowed to open it anymore. So you open it up, you write your code in, and you lock it so no one else can write there. There is also a declosed, but we're going to pretty much ignore that. That really just has to do with if SMRAM itself actually wants to write to video memory. So we don't care about that for now. So there's going to be two toggles that the BIOS is going to be flipping to do their job. So let's see how that works. Going back to this, let's start with the BIOS doing dopen equals one. So flip the toggle up. And that means that video memory now translates through to DRAM instead of video memory. Then the BIOS may copy its relocating SMRAM, SM, Cine System Management, Interrupt Handler, etc. They can copy that down there. If they hadn't said DOPEN, that wouldn't work. They would have been writing to video. Then they can go ahead and put it wherever else they wanted, do the same thing as before, cause a system management interrupt, Ms. Frizzle loses her face, goes into the shadow realm, and then you just have the typical relocation, change your SM base, blah, blah, blah and exactly the same as before, resume back out, and you've successfully changed SM base. Now the BIOS vendor is going to set DOPEN to zero, and that's going to go ahead and flip the switch so that this DRAM is no longer accessible. Now this is going to translate to video memory, not DRAM. Next, they're going to set DLOCK equal to one. When you do that, that means that you're no longer allowed to flip DOPEN open. You're not allowed to set this to one. So that means no one else would be able to write to DRAM here because it's continuously going to be video memory. So effectively, that control goes away, and now this range is protected. Well, that's great, except for the fact that I said that they typically move some code elsewhere. So the actual SM base is now 123000, and the actual Dark Sonic is hiding out there. So cool, this DLOCK and DOPEN and stuff, that helps protect here, which is great if you never move out of that 128 kilobytes of memory, but I said most people do. So we got to understand also how you're going to protect this up here. All right, well, let's get started on understanding the attacking SMM threat tree. Well, the attacker's goal is to write malware into SMRAM. And well, how can they do that? Well, one way is they can just go ahead and infect the spy flash. And that would bring us back to the previous tree. Well, we know that like if you infect the BIOS, the BIOS sets up the SMRAM and therefore you as an attacker are guaranteed to be able to write malware into SMRAM. So cool, infect the BIOS, we have already seen how that works. But now let's say the attacker is just running on the CPU and they want to infect the SMRAM. Well, the first defense against that is this CSEG defense. This SMRAM C DLOCK is one and SMRAM C DOPEN is zero. That's going to stop a attacker on the CPU from just writing into that SMRAM range. Now, the attacker, because RAM, this is SMRAM, it's RAM, it's just DRAM behind the scenes. And so if an attacker can write to that physical address, then they can successfully infect it. So one way they could do that is via DMA, direct memory access, and they could do that via some peripheral that has DMA access to the RAM.